Hello friends, this is Dr. Rajendra Sahu, Consultant Pain Specialist. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Neuron Pain Clinic. So this is an educational uh, MSK ultrasound video for our doctor colleagues. So in this video, today I'm going to demonstrate a step-by-step -step approach how to scan a normal shoulder joint. So it's basically a protocolized shoulder joint scanning technique. Okay, so for this, what I do, I make the patient remain seated in comfortably in front of me in a chair, in a stool. Okay, I sit in front of the patient, machine over there. Okay, and then I'm using a high frequency linear probe. Okay, in this probe, so this is the orientation marker that points to the left of the probe and this is the right. So if I put it over here like this, what you are going to see on the left is going to be the medial and right is going to be the lateral. So let's start. Step one is, so the model sitting comfortably in front of me, kind of hugging to this arm, hugging to the chest, neutral position like little supinated and slightly externally rotated. So I'm going to put over this. What you see now in this image, so this top is your deltoid muscle. So there are two bony components. This one on this left shows medial, right shows lateral. This is the lesser tuberosity of the humerus because it's kind of sloping and there is a tendon attachment which is subscapularis. And if I go further medial, I see the coracoid also. Okay, so that is lesser tuberosity. And here on this side, that is the greater tuberosity. Okay, so in the uh, intertubercular groove, what I look for is the presence or absence of biceps tendon. See now I can see that is a biceps tendon there. Okay, so if I toggle the probe a little bit, I, there is nothing. It looks like hypoechoic as if the tendon is absent. If I tilt the probe a little bit, so I can see the tendon very well. So this is something called anisotropy, a property displayed by tendons and the nerves. So on the top of that tendon, one can see a hypoechoic line that is called transverse humeral ligament okay so here in this what i see i see the probe uh, tendon nicely there is no fluid i go up coming down what i see now here this is the deltoid muscle this tendon is becoming slowly the muscle and here on medial side you know you can see this the pectoralis major tendon here as i go down as i slowly go up a bit of tendinous part coming up, slowly going up. Scan up in this manner to see the rotator cuff interval. See here, it was like this in the transverse plane. Slowly I go in this manner to see the rotator cuff interval. Here I am at the rotator cuff interval. That is the thumb like sign, that is the biceps tendon. This is subscapularis, supraspinatus. The roof is formed by that hyperechoic line that is the coracohumeral ligament that forms the roof of your rotator cuff interval. Here beneath floor is formed by superior glenohumeral ligament that is not generally not visible. For us to do a rotator cuff interval approach, our needle comes from medial to lateral. You pierce the coracohumeral ligament, put your needle tip exactly over here like needle tip, piercing that coracohumeral ligament on the lateral side. Here, just flows to the biceps tendon. The medication that you inject will flow into the joint, okay? So needle will come medial like this, medial to lateral and will end up over here. So that is the step one. So you look for the biceps tendon and scan up and down to see if there is a fluid or anything of that sort. So that step one is done short axis of the biceps tendon and following this what I'll do I'll change my probe to long axis step 2 here in this same position in the long axis what I see this is the this is my humerus and that is biceps tendon there one can see the fibrillar appearance of the biceps tendon as I slowly come down that is biceps tendon look if there is any fluid tenosynovitis or biceps tendon see the fluid you know so that is a tendon that's a small blood vessel as I slowly go down down so that will merge and slowly become the muscle. So that is the tendon biceps. There is no fluid. As I slowly go up, it goes inside the joint, becomes intraarticular. Here is that intraarticular portion of the biceps tendon. 
and its intraarticular fibrillar appearance, intraarticular portion of the biceps tendon. Okay, so I scanned all the way medial lateral entirety of the tendon to look for any tendon fiber tear or kind of uh, any tendinosis, tendon fluid, or any, anything of that sort. So step one and step two are done. Step three is from that position, I'll move my probe slightly medial to look for the long axis scanning of subscapularis. So that is the lesser tuberosity. This is the subscapularis tendon. So ultrasound helps in a dynamic assessment. I'll tell the model to slowly abduct in a lagithi abduct. Abduct. Okay. So one can see the that is the footprint. So this portion is the footprint. So that, that is where the tendon is getting inserted. This is the fibrillar appearance of the tendon. Okay. So this is going in and out. Okay. So that is the fibrillar appearance of the subscapular is tendon you can see the nicely slowly right so that is the tendon there okay so this is the subscapular is tendon and that is the footprint that means that is the insertion from here you can see those are the articular cartilage so that is insertion okay from here i'll change to 90 degrees to scan in a short axis one can see in short axis this tendon is multi-pinnated appearance that means you, know, you can see one two three different pinna and there's a bit of hypoechoic tissue in between so that is a normal appearance of a tendon multi-pinnated okay so like multiple tendons in between they're like kind of muscle they are multi-pinnated appearance so tendon looks normal here okay so this is a step four scanning so i'm done with the front part now Okay, so now we'll move into the anterior superior part that is the supraspinatus, that is step 5. Step 5, I'll do a normal scanning of the supraspinatus in a neutral position. So I'll put my probe over, this is your acromion. So you see that is the supraspinatus tendon, this is deltoid muscle, this thin subacromial bursa. So most of the supraspinatus tendon is hidden beneath the uh, acromion there. So for us to properly visualize the supraspinatus tendon, uh, we have to do certain maneuver. So there are two maneuvers. One is called modified cross and cross. Cross is basically, we tell the patient to do this way, complete internal rotation. This is called cross position. Okay. Modified cross is that you do put your hand, palm over your bum, as if you're trying to take out something from your wallet like this. So one needs to understand the difference between these two positions. In the cross, your shoulder goes into extreme rotation, internal rotation. Your biceps tendon will be hidden. Once you scan in long and short axis, you won't be able to see the biceps tendon. And in patients with cough tear or even a frozen shoulder, they'll have a lot of difficulty to do this extreme uh, internal rotation. Whereas in modified cross, you just do a bit of uh, abduction external rotation okay it doesn't go into extreme internal rotation so here most of the patients will be able to do that it's not very painful number two the benefit is that your biceps tendon is still in the front you can assess the biceps tendon and subsequently the supraspinatus tendon the reason is that most of the supraspinatus tendon happen in the anterior part of the tendon okay so once you see the biceps tendon you can locate the distance of that tear with relation to the biceps tendon. So these are the two differences. Now I'm starting with this step five, that is the modified cross position. Comfortably seated like this, hand just on the bum as if trying to take something from the wallet. So, so just imagine this is the supraspinatus tendon comes and gets inserted over the superior facet of the greater tuberosity. So I put one end of the probe over here the other end pointing towards the ear so when i do that so this is what one should look for okay so this is the tuberosity greater tuberosity and, and that is the insertion so the supraspinatus tendon so this is the insertional portion of the supraspinatus tendon and these are all highline cartilage so why do i why, why do i say that that is the supraspinatus tendon I can just slide my probe little anterior as I go anterior 
one can see that is the biceps tendon fibrillar biceps tendon going in the intertubercular sulcus here so that is the biceps tendon as you slowly scan from that point what you start to see that is the supraspinatus tendon so like a big like appearance so this is the insertional component and these are all high line cartilage this is fibrillar nice supraspinatus tendon from here i will scan little posteriorly to see other component of the biceps tendon one can see nice biceps tendon there this is the high line cartilage supraspinatus tendon so in this image what one can appreciate is that this is your deltoid muscle at the top this is the insertional part so this is the bursal surface and this is the articular or the insertional surface of the biceps uh, supraspinatus tendon and there is a small hypoechoic line here that small hypoechoic line that is the subacromial bursa that small hypoechoic line that is the subacromial bursa this line this line on top of that there is a hyperechoic line that is the periversal fat pad so that is the small hypoechoic line bursa there so this is the long axis scanning of the supraspinatus tendon now i'm going to show you the difference in a cross position so this was the modified cross position that we normally regularly do now it is kind of extremely rotated in the cross position see i can see supraspinatus tendon very well most of the biceps tendon is very nicely visible there is that subacromial small hypoechoic subacromial bursa fat pad delta let me slowly anteriorly slide the probe as i go anterior i don't see the biceps tendon because it is all in extreme internal rotation the biceps tendon is hidden i can't see it so that is the difference between the modified cross and the cross position so once we have done a long axis this is a long axis scanning this is the tendon is oriented like this i'm scanning now i'll go to short axis scanning of the supraspinatus tendon so here like a perpendicular scan one can see this is the nice rotator cuff tear this is the supraspinatus as i go posterior one can see the infraspinatus tendon so this is the humerus the um, tuberosity of the humerus and here this hypoechoic cartilage there thin line that is subacromial bursa there this thin line that is the subacromial bursa that thin line the white line on top of it that is the periversal fat pad and this is the deltoid muscle now as i told you in this modified cross position if i slide anteriorly i can see the biceps tendon here this is my biceps tendon this is the biceps tendon so that is the difference between a modified cross and the cross position so this concludes step 6 very nice fibrillar appearance of the supraspinatus tendon one can go posteriorly and as you go posteriorly one can see this infraspinatus tendon also coming and getting inserted over here next is from here the next step is ac joint 5 and 6 supraspinatus long and short axis ac joint from this position as i scan over the acromion this is the acromion okay i'll slide my probe anterior anterior to find the ac joint and and change a little bit in coronal plane so now what i see this is that acromion this is the clavicle okay and that is the hyperechoic cartilage of the capsule so this is the acromio acromio clavicular joint and that is the capsule and the ligament reinforced for me to do a ac joint injection i'll come from medial to lateral that means from here to here pierce this capsule there pierce this capsule put my needle tip over here and do the injection so that is end of step 7 now that i have completed uh, the anterior and the superior part of the glenohumeral joint i'll turn the patient to that side look into the posterior part of the joint for posterior glenohumeral joint i position this way patient like you know this hand will be approximated to the other shoulder so that the joint is exposed see like this position i'll feel for this is the scapular spine just below that i i'll put my probe like this and we'll look into the joint so now that what you see here this is the posterior glenohumeral joint what you see this is the humeral head 
This muscle is your deltoid. This is the infraspinatus. This black line on the top of that white head, that is the hypoechoic articular cartilage, hyaline cartilage of the humerus. And deep down there, this is the glenoid, that bone. And this hyperechoic line is your hyal, sorry, that is the labrum there. Okay, so let me do a dynamic assessment. You can tell the patient to this rotation. So once I do this external rotation, you can see this head moving nicely joint getting excursion so that is the tendons of the infraspinatus so one can see the joint movement you can see the so once he does that one can see the movement nicely there you know glenoid the labrum the infraspinatus tendon okay so and from here I will go a little lateral to look for the spiny glenoid notch. Okay, so this is the this is the glenoid. So this is your uh, trapezius. This is the infraspinatus. So spiny glenoid notch. It's this one. This one, this spiny glenoid notch, and there is a bit of pulsation over here. In this area, you see that is pulsation here. That is spinal glenoid notch. If I put some color, one can see the pulsation of that is pulsation there. Okay, so any kind of paralabral cyst from labrum can cause and compression of that branch to the infraspinatus. So that concludes a stepwise approach to the shoulder joint. If you like it, you can share among your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you again.